school for real. Yeah. Woo. You gotta love seeing Brandon Graham that excited for the first day in pads in his 14th Eagles training camp. The Eagles will have a day off tomorrow, but then we'll be back at it Thursday and Friday. Those will be the first consecutive practices of the summer. Welcome into Birds Huddle, powered by PointsBet, along with the Barrett Brooks. I'm Taryn Hatcher. Barrett, does it finally start to feel real when you throw on those pads and you're sweating in those stinky pads for the first time in training camp? Well, I mean, you know, we thought that it was the Eagles and how they do it, but it's actually the NFL and what should make them do it. They have to wait seven days before they get out in full pads. What, uh, when I was in playing, when I was playing, as soon as we got there, the next day after we ran that conditioning test, we were right there in pads in the morning, pads at night for three days straight, and then we got a half a day where we got pads on but no second practice on the fourth day. I'd still be playing now if I had that type of schedule. But, hey, 22 starters in the Super Bowl, I can't say anything about it. You're not mad. Just Not wish at all. it was a little bit different. Right. All right. It's time now for the three-point stance. Stance number one. After a career year last season, Hassan Reddick is on a quest for greatness. In his sixth NFL season, Reddick was tied for second in the league with 16 sacks. And he was first in the NFL with five forced fumbles. Oh, by the way, he tacked on another three and a half sacks in the playoffs. And today at practice, Reddick made it clear that despite being a bit of a late bloomer, he believes he's now one of the elite defensive players in the entire league. When you speak of Hassan Reddick, you know, the first four years, they were down years. For whatever reason they may be, they were down years. Uh, now I'm at a point where even though my production is, you know, crazy last year, crazy productive year, the name is catching up with the work. Uh, you know, so I, I, I will agree with you on that. Um, first couple years kind of put me behind, but I'm here. I've shown it already, right? I, last year, I've shown one of the most elite, one of the best at what I do. You know, top five, when you talk about Hassan Reddick, if I'm not in that category for you, then what are you, do you really, I, now I got a question, do you really know football? What are you using to drive yourself, to motivate yourself, to, to get better, to get to another level? Greatness. I mean, when you're playing a sport like this, right, what are you playing for? You know, some a lot of people do play for it. You know, some people are paying, uh, playing for a paycheck. Me, I come out here every day. I give my all. I go hard. I work. That's what I do. Why? Because I want to be great. I want to be great. Simply that. You know, I'm. I'm. I, I want to be in the Hall of Fame. I want to be a decorated player. I have inward motivation. Nothing else motivates me other than being the best player that I could be. Because once it's all said and done, and you say Hassan Reddick's name. You know, from this point forward, it should be about the leg. How, how, how did he turn his career around? Got to the point where he's at now. Uh, how he became a legend at whatever it is that he's, you know, doing. All right, really looking inward there. Barrett, how valuable is it to have a player like Reddick, who he has that, that thirst, that desire to be great, especially because, I mean, if there were a couple of seasons in Arizona where he wasn't really used the way we saw him be productive this past season, now that he's found his footing there, he's taken off. No question, you know, and, and Hassan Reddick has done it the old-fashioned way, hard work. And I love what he said. Uh, name is, con is, is, is connected with the work that he's doing. His name is starting to, you know, come forward with all the work he's put in his entire life. He didn't get the, you know, big scholarship. He went to Temple and had to walk on at first. His mom paid for school the first semester. Those are the things that, you know, really put him in a frame of mind. Like, look, I got to make sure that I am the best version of myself I can be. Going into that, got drafted in the first round. They saw his talent, but Arizona didn't use his talent the right way. They had him at a stand-up linebacker. Once he got a chance to get out there and rush on the outside like he did when he was in college, he turned to dynamics on how people approached playing him in the defense. And for the last three years, that's what he's done. He's taken that and ran with it. Hassan Reddick is really good at being on the outside. I remember when he first got here to the Eagles and they were trying to figure out a way, how can we use and design plays to get and put him in the right uh, position to be successful? 
And I kept saying from the beginning, just put them on the edge and let them rush. It doesn't matter if it's on the right side or left side or wherever. Just put them on the line and let them rush. And he shows he can go out there and work over those big offensive tackles in a, uh, you know, on the outside and, and run past tight ends to go make great plays in, in the playoffs. And we got to remember, his numbers last year really impressive, but he got off to a slow start last year. A slow start, well. yes. He was dropping back in defense a lot. Whether they didn't know what he was or what, he, what they could do to make him a great player. And once they put him where he was supposed to be, and that's on the edge going against these tackles and tight ends. Then he showed, hey, right, just leave me here. Yeah. I'll do all the work. I, I put in work. Let me go out there and work. Well, hopefully we can see him hit the ground running this year. All right, moving on to stance number two. Cam Jurgens is looking like the starter at right guard. He's been getting all the first team reps so far in camp and says he's now over 300 pounds. We know he was aiming to gain some weight for the shift from center to guard. Here's his simple yet effective method for putting on the pounds. Eat what tastes good. I had two ribeye steaks last night for dinner, so Charles in the cafeteria makes a mean ribeye. <laughs> Eat what tastes good, Barrett. Uh, must be real nice. Now, do you see this as a real competition at all at right guard, or is Jurgens going to be the guy barring any kind of injury there? No, Jurgens is already a year ahead of, um, uh, you know, the, his competitors at being at Stoutland University. You know, I understand, you know, that we, we, we're we saying he's too small because he plays center. No, the, in all actuality, he's the same size as Isaac Sayamalu. Same size, but exact, he's exactly an inch shorter. So he's a little more stockier than Sayamalu. Sayamalu was six foot four. Jurgens is six foot three. Sayamalu weighed 305. He weighs 305. So it's not really him being small. He is perfect size to be right there. And Stalin University has helped him take his game to another level. He knows the offense like the back of his hand. He's the center, so he knows what all the uh, other four guys do. He can call the uh, defense himself. He understands where the mic is and all that stuff. So that's a decided advantage for him to be at this guard position. I knew they had a lot of faith in him going into this next year. I had faith in him going into this next year. And he just got to go out and show everybody else and get him up to pace on how good he can be. This will still be the number one offensive line in the NFL, even with Cam Jurgens at the um, at the right guard spot. So they'll be just fine going into this. With their, just fine. With their ribeye-powered right guard. All right. You, know, you, you got to love that. You know, eat what tastes good. I wish I could eat what tastes good. Oh, but if I look at food, I see food, I gain weight. So I got to do pushaways. That's, yeah. my, that's my exercise. Push away. That metabolism is just slowing <laughs> right down there. I feel you. All right, stance number three. Listen, it's not shocking, given what we know about Jalen Hurts, that he's going to be motivated in all the right ways by the Birds' Super Bowl loss to the Chiefs. Here's offensive coordinator Brian Johnson, who has known Hurts for decades, and he's resting assured that that loss, it, it's not going to adversely affect Jalen. Jalen's naturally a very uniquely driven person. Um, you know, and I think, you know, he said something about, you know, he, he didn't go through the fire just to smell the smoke. And, uh, you know, so I think that just kind of throws another log on a, on a very, very hot fire that's burning internally already. So, uh, you know, I have no concerns about that with Jay at all. I feel like Johnson has heard all the catchphrases, and he's yeah, like, yeah. I want to build on one. All right, Barrett, so only eight teams have ever returned to the Super Bowl the year after losing it. Only three teams have won it all. Do you think Hurts has the right leadership qualities to keep the Eagles laser-focused on the task at hand this season, which seems to be hoisting that Lombardi trophy? That's the major reason why I think they have a great opportunity to make it to the Super Bowl this next year. The focus that they have from their fearless leader, the focus that they have that he's going to be a guy that's going to go out there and cross all his T's, dot all his I's, making sure that the main thing stays the main thing. His focus will allow them to, you know, to get even better than they were last year. He's never going to be comfortable just staying the same. To him staying the same is him getting worse. He's going to make sure he's going to lift as he climbs. And that's the biggest thing you're going to get with Jalen Hurts. He's going to make the players around him better. Even now, people are talking about how accurate he's become. Well, he was accurate last year. He's going to be even more accurate this year because he has another year under that same offense. He knows where the ball is supposed to go. With him, he's going to get it to the open player. He's going to make sure that he analyze what's going on in front of him and make the right reads. He is a, you know, skillful guy. We know that. What is, you know, where he runs, where he goes out, he can throw, the way he, you know, reads the defense. But at this point, 
I think he's going to be even better simply because he knows it a lot better than he knew it last year. He's going to lift as he climbs. We know that man can lift a lot of weight. Oh, All right, question. much more birds huddle again here ahead. Excuse me. Here's the playbook. I caught up with NBC's Peter King at camp today. And uh, let's just say he is bullish on the birds this season. Plus, Ruben Frank and Davis and Garrow offer their insights on Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown lighting it up early in camp. And Jets offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett responds to Sean Payton saying that Hackett, Hackett did one of the worst coaching jobs in NFL history last mm. season with the Broncos. We'll be right back. Bird's Huddle is powered by PointsBet. It's time to step up your same game parlay with SGP Combo. Combine bets for multiple games and build the ultimate parlay. PointsBet, your move.